Hi friends, we are with a new video on VBOTS. First of all, thanks to our subscribers. This video is made by the request of some subscribers where they feel that teaching about supervisor will be a great idea. So here we are with a great example of Tom and Jerry. Initially, we'll look at how it works and then we can go into details of code and resources. So let's see the example. This is a cool method by which you can have a particular node where you move this object and you see other object follows it. So we try to make it interesting where we have Tom catching Jerry, but it will never be able to do so as in real life. We'll learn how to make this today. So first of all, let's start with the introduction of supervisor. As many of you must have worked with different types of nodes. So here, if we add a node, we have different types of node like robot node, shape node. In robot node, there is a special function which is supervisor. So if you turn this to true, you can use the functionality of supervisor. So now let's first go through why do we need to use supervisor. First of all, this is a great functionality in a simulated software. You see very few softwares uh, which have the functionality of giving your robots super parts. So for example, if I want to make this box as my robot, and I don't want to invest my time in adding motor, adding wheels so that it moves correctly. I can just make it as a supervisor and I can use different methods to move this. Like I can use my joystick and those commands will be converted by supervisor in order to get the motion. Okay. So this sounds difficult. But believe me, it's not. It's a very small code and logically it will all make sense soon. So let's go through the applications of what this supervisor can do. So basically, when you make a new robot, you need to tweak these fields in order to get your robot correct. So supervisor basically is a master by which we can code and we can change these parameters. So for example, if by some way I can change the translation, I can see the node moving. And that's exactly what we'll be doing today. Now, think about the impact of supervisor. We can do many things like resetting our simulation to start or stuff where you need human intervention can be automated by a supervisor. And being a robotics engineer, I feel that there is a very good application of this supervisor node in robotics field. For example, if you see a robot, there are many different chunks which make a complete robot like controls, perception, planning, etc. So if there is a engineer who wants to test his perception algorithm, and if you don't have this node, you'll have to go through pain of making a robot, putting it wheels, and then he will also need to write a controller so that his wheels move. Just to test a perception algorithm, he'll need to go through all these details. Rather, what he can do is he can make a robot node. He can add a camera to it and he can use this for object tracking application where camera will give the next pose of the robot depending on the image tracked and supervisor node can directly be used to track the position. Also, if I have a new planning algorithm and if we are in a multi robot scenario where we assume that there are no failures in robot, so we can have the supervisor and we can make just a box and name it as robot and test 
the multi agent simulation or multi agent algorithm where your two nodes if they collide that means you have a colliding path in your multi agent scenario so this was all about how we can apply supervisor in different applications so now let's quickly go through the code so now we will look into the controller so if i hit on edit i can see my controller window so let's walk through the code and we also have a very good documentation done by vbots where we have all the functionalities in depth so if you want to use supervisor with different application you can go through some of the functions very easy to understand and implement so they also have some examples i will share the link of this page in the description below so now let's go through our code so now let's look controller for this file of tom and jerry if you are new to vbots and you don't know how we write a controller or how we make a world you need to see previous videos we will give you the link to the previous vbot tutorial series so let's start with the code here on higher level we query the position of tom which is master node and we add some offsets in x y and z direction to publish jerry's position so you see here we are publishing jerry's position pos where we are adding x y z with some constant so now this makes sense because when i move tom my tom's position changes and with some offsets my jerry position changes so it it seems like jerry is running away from tom but actually tom is giving the position of jerry this is how you can use your node to control your robot without having wheels so now let's go through the code so first of all we include supervisor.hpp which is already implemented in vbots folder then we define time step to be 32 then we use name spacing of vbots and now the main part of the code starts so now we make a pointer to supervisor class in our dynamic memory because new is used then we make a pointer by using supervisor class to jerry and tom this uses get from def function so get from def function is used when you have a robot node and when you define it with a name there are other methods to get the pointer to another node which does not have def field so you see here we have def of tom which we used here to get the pointer of this node so we have slave node as jerry and master node as tom similarly now we use jerry's pointer and we use get field translation this means there are different fields in this node jerry so get field translation means i am taking the value inside this field so my slave translation field will be a pointer to a 3d vector which is 0.12.15 and minus 0.33 similarly i query my master's position then i initialize a constant with 0 0 this is the while loop which spins forever till your simulation does not stop so now inside while loop what we do is we take the master nodes vector and convert it into array my this pointer will have my value in an array so now i can access it so what we can do is we have this array 
where we can give x coordinate equal to Tom's x coordinate plus 0.5. So it's in 0.5 in front of x. Similarly, y equal to Tom's y minus 0.1 and z equal to Tom's z plus 0.1. So this is how I defined offset to Jerry's location. So now it's easy. Once this is done, we convert the position array into 3D vector because Vbot understands standard messages. So now I set my vector to 3D float and we give the position. And this is how you can publish the position. So we are using the slave translation field and we are setting vector 3 float the position which we just defined. This will run forever and you will see Tom never catching Jerry. At the end, as we previously defined supervisor in dynamic memory, we delete it so that we don't do any memory leak in our controller. And finally, the sweet statement of return zero. So this was a fun video and a fun project. I would like you to try these and make some cool simulations and share it with our community. If you like the video, do share it and as our subscribers are very active, I want you guys to give me more suggestions on what videos will be good for everyone. Thank you.